Hello everyone, my name is Katie Walker. I am so excited to be with you guys again and do this study uh, for Romans with you. This is your midweek engage. We are studying Romans 6, 11 through 23. Um, I hope you guys are good. I'm going to wait just a quick second <clears throat> to give a few of you time to um, jump on. I hope that your day is great. I am in um, <clears throat> Louisiana and it is a sunny, beautiful day here. So I just wanted, um, I hope it's beautiful where you are. We've had some really big storms. Um, so I'm happy for the sunshine. I'm happy for the sunshine. I hope that you are full of love and joy today. I know that um, at any given moment, our days can change, but I just want to say, uh, let's rejoice and be happy. I'm real excited about this study because I started this with um, a picture from the Lord. I started asking God, I said, what do you want to say, say on this midweek engage? What is this picture that you want to give us because I love what Dr. Brian has been teaching us on Romans 611. And I saw the picture of um, uh, Braveheart. Have you seen Braveheart, the movie? And it's William Wallace. And all I saw was a picture and he had the blue paint across his face, Mel Gibson did, and he yells, freedom. And it was the very scene that I saw regarding Romans is today, the Lord wants to give you freedom and, and yelling freedom through grace, freedom from guilt, freedom from condemnation, freedom because the word frees, he frees. And so today with you lovers of God that love to dive in, it is time for you to be free so you can step into the next because this is the season where the dry barren winter is over and he is calling you up. He's saying, come on, come away with me, my lovers, because my lovers never quit. It is time to declare freedom. It is time for a revival of our hearts. It is time to move in the Holy Holy Spirit to do signs and miracles and wonders. It is time to encourage and teach those around us. It is time to display the love of God. It is time for us to awaken and to rise up as the church linked arms together and saying, we will prevail. The Lord will move. Sickness will go. We will bring heaven's kingdom to earth. We will just shock the people. If you have done the Song of Solomon study, the word neshak, it is a homonym. Dr. Brian teaches us these beautiful words and these homonym words where the Shulamite is saying, oh Lord God, I, I need you to neshak me. Neshak is three meanings. It means it means to kiss me. That means I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your word. I want to dive in. I want to understand. I want breath to breath. I need you to blow upon me. I need your presence. Oh, Holy Spirit, I need your presence. It also means I'm to be intoxicated. I want to be intoxicated by your joy. We are weapons of righteousness when we are moving with the Holy Spirit. To be intoxicated, to drink in your love and to just overflow more. I want more, oh God, from you. More, oh or Lord, oh Lord, we need more. And then the last one is to equip for battle. That's right. The Lord wants a combat booted bride. And we do that by studying the word. And today he wants to declare freedom from sin's reign over your life, freedom from condemnation, freedom from guilt, guilt, guilt sorry, freedom so that we can be the combat booted bride so that we can war and we can declare freedom over other people's lives because when we step in and move in our destiny and purpose which is that intimacy and a part of the kingdom with god then we can declare freedom over people and chains break chains break so today is your day. It is the day for you to receive more revelation on freedom. It is also the day for you to declare freedom over people because your mouth, you are a mouthpiece full of power.
hour and it's time to go. Uh, amen. So, Lord, we love you. I praise you. I thank you, Father, for um, just being here. I thank you for your presence. I thank you, Lord God, that as two or more are gathered together, that you are sending your arms to angels to flight over this cause. I thank you for revelation of your word, more understanding, more wisdom, Father, more love. May we receive and may we go in Jesus' name. Thank you for courage. Thank you for joy. And thank you for this word. We love you. We love you. We love you in Jesus' name. Man, I'm fired up. I'm ready. I wish that I could um, see all of you and be with you, but we are going to start in, um, I hope you've had uh, a chance to to listen to Dr. Simmons teach on Monday, Romans 6, 11 through 23. If you haven't, go back, take each note. I'm going to um, review it because it's so good. So um, this is 6, 11. I'm going to start right here. Um, and it says, so let it be the same way with you. Since you are now joined with him, which that, see, that gives me such joy and hope. I'm so joined. We are so joined. Repeat that you are joined with him. You must continually view yourselves as dead and unresponsive to sin's appeal while living daily for God's pleasure in union with Jesus, the anointed one. We must continually view ourselves as dead to sin. This is so important in our life, just as we must continually view the way that he sees us because a lot of our family or friends or people that are in front of us don't view us the way that the Lord views us. And you get bogged down in critical words and words that are spoken over you and it's hard to continue and then you're upset about something that maybe you've done as a Christian you know better I should not have acted that way I should not have been impatient and then you're you're bogged down in this condemnation and you cannot grab on to what the Lord is saying on grabbing on to this grace and he's saying continually view continually view the way that I speak to you continually view the way that I've called you so we are he is telling us we must continually view that we are dead to sin so this is our sentence that we are going to say, continually view it. No, I am dead to sin. That does not even move me. I don't want it. I want the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to host him all over my body and in my entire being. I will continually view myself as dead to sin and co-mingled with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am continually inter interwoven with him. He is embracing me, covering me beside under me, over me, before me. Do you understand? I'm continually viewing the sight. I'm not viewing the chaos that is around me. I am viewing the King of Kings. I'm looking at those fire eyes and I'm saying, I am so dead to sin because I'm with you and you have no sin in you. Do you understand? So you can look at yourself and be free. I mean, you're ready to go like war. I am ready to war. With I wish I had blue paint. I would put it on right now. Oh, put it on right now. All right. So verse 12, I love the title of this, Sin's Reign is Over. We are declaring this before we're even walking into war today, that sin's reign is over. It has no hold on you. You've got to understand, this has no hold on you. Though you may have the thoughts, though may they come at you and the darts come at you and you're still dealing with it and you feel like it, the feelings, you just tell them, sin's reign is over. I am new. I have the king of kings inside of me. Okay, so verse 12. Sin is a dethroned monarch. Okay, we have revolted. We have re revolted by the blood of Jesus. So you must no longer give it opportunity to rule over your life, controlling how you live and compelling you to obey its desires and cravings. So you have to see yourself as dead. You are raised as a new person. You are not who you were. You are not who you were yesterday. You are not the same person. You are new with great mercies and great grace today. You are new. So how you view yourself is so important. And in the Song of Solomon, the Lord says, the King says over you, you are beauty itself. And she's a goat keeping girl. She's a pedestrian walking across the street. And he's saying the creator God who created all of this beauty and all of this majesty, he says, your beauty itself. We must, it is very important how we view ourselves. And you, no matter how you feel, 
or what words have been spoken over to you, over you, you must take those words that the Lord is saying and you must partner with them, grab onto them with faith and say, I will view myself the way you see me. I will refuse to join sin's reign. It is dethroned in me. I am a new person. I'm not who I was 30 seconds ago. I am with the King of Kings. I am new and I am grabbing onto you, Lord, because I don't feel that way, but I am proclaiming it. I am saying freedom over my life that I'm a new person, that the Holy Spirit is reigning in me and I am ready to go. Do you understand? That is how we must view ourselves. Oh, I'm so fired up. All right, verse 13. So then refuse to answer its call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Refuse it. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for his pleasure. Oh, he so adores you ready to be used for his noble purposes. Listen, you're ready. You are a weapon. This is what I've been, I'm like, I'm so fired up because I can see the end from the beginning. I can see the breakthrough and I can see the yelling of all of us crying out freedom over people because you are a weapon to, with your words, to proclaim breakthrough over people that are around you. It is time for us to rise up and declare that we are a weapon. If we are free and we know we are free and we have grabbed onto this word and said, yes, that this grace has transformed me, then I can use my words as a weapon over the enemy and say, I have calling and declaring freedom over my friend. I am declaring freedom over depression. I'm declaring freedom over anxiety. I am declaring that you are free, that the grace of God is covering you and no more can this um, dethrone you and take you down. So it is, this is a new life and a new identity. We must grab onto this new identity. I love Dr. Brian's example of the tea bag. I have used this in my mind every single day since I've heard it. Every single day, especially when the thoughts come at you, because the thoughts are still going to come. It's not like the thoughts don't come or the, our actions or the way that we feel or the way that we respond to somebody or, or somebody being ugly to us. It, it doesn't matter the way that we respond. I mean, let me say this again. What I have to remember is that I, that the Lord is commingled with us, that he's like, um, we're like the hot water and he's the tea bag. And the longer it seeps in us, it just infiltrates all of us. All of us, all of all of the dark places that we want to hide from, the things that we don't want to bring up, the things that we want to put into a closet. He's peering in and he's saying, come with me and let me cover you because my grace and my blood covers you and I am calling you forth and I am like this co-mingled with you. You are one with me. You can't escape me. I am covering you. Get up under my covering lean in, let me cover you. And I want you to see yourself covered. I want you to see yourself that you are one with me. So you have the power. Sin cannot reign. I am with you. I am bubbling up hope inside of you. I am saying no more to this. I have a great example of, of this, um, like the bubbling up of hope of how God is co-mingled with us. Um, uh, Gosh, it's probably been two decades when my parents were got divorced. It was an ugly divorce. It broke, it obviously, divorce breaks your heart. It tears apart families. It's, um, it's a really tough situation. I would never wish it upon anyone. Um, but at this time, my mom was in a, a, a place where she had just moved into her home. She was alone. She had never known this alone part. And she tells this story that was so profound to me. She says, you know, I moved in. I sat down on my sofa. And I said, well, you know, I'm alone. It's quiet. There's nobody with me. And she said right then, because it was an enemy's thought right then, this word bubbled up, the Holy Spirit bubbled up inside of me. And he said, you're never alone. I am always with you. And she said, all of a sudden I remembered he's with me. The word bubbled up within me and I received it and I've been transformed by your grace and you are with me and I'm not alone. And she said, 
I've got a smile on my face. Here I was, my situation hadn't changed, but this, this bubbled up hope came inside of me. And so I could war with the word. I could war. And this is what God is saying. It is time for us to dethrone the lies that are in our minds. It is time for us to go. He is everywhere with you. He is saturating you with his glory. And so when that word gets inside of us at the right times, it will bubble up and you will hear it in your ears. And it's something that passes your under your own understanding. Your mind can't bring it up. And it just, it just flows out of you. And you're like, you know what? You're a weapon that is being used. And you can use that weapon to destroy the enemy and dethrone the kingdom of, of hell itself. Like it is time. Like, I want you to grab up this word. I want you to hold on to it like faith. I want us to put the blue paint of Braveheart on and declare freedom today. This is your day to declare, I'm so free. I am one with thee that I am ready to go. I am ready to war that nothing in my past will deter me because I am so co-mingling with him. He is every part of me and even if I don't feel like it I'm grabbing up my weapon of faith I am leaning into the hope and the love of my life and I am ready to go oh my gosh glory to God we may not get past uh verse 12 okay here we go we're gonna go verse 13 okay let me find it verse 13 so then did I read 13 I think I did no purpose verse 14 okay remember this Sin will not conquer you. You have won. For God already has. Thank you, Lord, that you have conquered us. That we are made for you. That you don't let one of your one of your lambs go, Lord. That you continually hold us and keep us. You are not governed by law, but governed by the reign of the grace of God. This is so beautiful. Grace is hard to understand sometimes. People, I love grace. I hold on to it because that grace that is inside of us, the Holy Spirit leans into us. The laws tell us, the laws tell us, um, um, don't, let me think, let me think. Don't, I'm thinking of an illustration I want to use. Uh, honor your parents, okay? They honor your parents. Um, but the Holy Spirit tells us how. The Holy Spirit that lives inside us, the grace that is covering over us says, hey, hey, why don't you call them today? Why? The law just tells me if I'm not honoring. It just tells me if I'm not. But the grace, the, the Holy Spirit, it, it mingles with the honoring of your father. And he says, hey, call your parents. Pick up the phone. Go rake a, just whatever it is. Say a sweet word, whatever. But the Holy Spirit leads God and counsels you with his eyes upon you. And the grace covers you like, hey, maybe you weren't very nice yesterday. Maybe that wasn't honoring. I want to pull you up and I want you to use your words. I want you to honor honor we have favor with god he has conquered us oh lord sin is always overcome by our christ life it is overcome all we have to do is know our truth oh i loved this dr brian talked about the the things that he learned in um bible school he said he said all you have to do is know truth reckon yourself dead to sin reckon yourself i'm dead to it, yield your body to him and then obey what he says. And that's that's so we know the truth. So we are learning the truth right now that we are dead to sin, that it has been dethroned, that he has done it all. And we just get to let him do this to us. We get to receive his love. We get to understand the word and let it wash over us. We get to reckon, we reckon ourselves we're dead. I've put a stake in the ground. You know how the um Israelites of old would leave um, rocks in places as remembrance stones that they, oh yes, we will not go back. We will not turn away because this is what the Lord has done. We have reckoned ourselves dead. Oh yeah, I don't have to be a sin to this addiction anymore. I don't have to live this way because the grace of God flows in me. The Holy Spirit reigns. I am dead to this. I will move now. 
follow him and call him and he will lead and guide me i will lean on him like the like jacob leaned on the staff coming out of the wilderness i will lean on his word and i will trust him because he is not a god that shall be lie, lie. he is faithful and true and when we're not faithful and true he still is and his word still is glory to god so we will yield our entire being we will say i don't feel like it but i yield because i trust you know a lot more than I do and then I'm gonna obey you I'm gonna obey when you tell me to move I'm not gonna I'm gonna walk and content through the fear of the unknown because oh this is so beautiful the unknown and the fear is sometimes what makes us stop moving we're afraid oh we've gotten all of ourselves here wrecking ourselves dead we know the truth and we have yielded our body yet in the obedience we're like wait and you have to know he is faithful and true. He's not going to lead you to dark places without him. He's going to hold our hands and move with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so now, verse 15, what are we to do then? Should we sin to our heart's content since there's no law to condemn us anymore? <laughs> what a terrible thought. I love this. I love this. Living great embraced within us becomes the ruling monarch of our life every command of god comes with the grace to do this i love this the whole um dr brian said every command that the lord has given us comes with the grace he said he said it comes with the zip file like that we get so when the when the lord says hey love the lord your god with all of your heart and all of your mind and all of your soul we could be like oh i don't know how to do this he says it comes with the prof prophecy it comes with the prophetic word of i've already given you the grace to do this the one that's co-mingled with you that is the hot that is a tea bag co-mingled into your hot water that is in all over you knows how to do it and he will love through you we get to yield we get to let him we get to let him draw us to to this great grace so we just release that and we just say yes lord yes Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you for the command. Thank you for your command for prophetic words over us. You know, if ever received prophetic we're like, oh, this is great. This is great. The Lord's prophetic words come true. The Lord's prophetic words are true words. So when the Lord says, love the Lord your God with, with um, all of your heart and all of your being, he's saying, I'm giving you the grace. I'm walking with you and I am much fully maturing you and loving you. And I'm going to help you love me with all of your heart, mind, and soul. And let me tell you something. When you're in love with the word, when you are in love with the king of kings, lovers don't quit. They can't. They become the most loving doulas servant they've ever, you, you can't quit. When you make a mistake, you can't quit because you love and you can so feel the Holy Spirit move. You just can't quit. You say, I got to get up. I got to wash this off of me because the Holy Spirit is reigning in me and I am called to freedom. So I'm going to put my war paint back on and I'm going to declare freedom and I'm going to move in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Okay. Verse 16. Let's keep going. Verse 16. Don't let grace freeze you. you choose your own matter, but choose carefully for your surrender to become a servant. Bound to the one who chooses. Who you choose to obey. If you choose to love sin, your master. If you if you will own, it will own you and reward you with death. But if you choose to love and obey God, he will lead you into perfect righteousness. I it's I, one of my life verses is um is the Lord will lead, guide, and counsel you with his eyes upon you. Grab it, grab it, take your Lifers. He will lead and guide you. He, into, he will lead us into perfect righteousness. Why would we choose to get back into captivity? Why would we choose to jump back into that sin that so easily entangles us? Why would we not look at that stake in the ground and say, I'm co-mingled with you. You've passed the baton to me. The Holy Spirit reigns in me. I will let you be my mouthpiece. I will let you um, give me wisdom and revelation. I will not make a move without you. You are my map. I love to think of of the of the word and the Holy Spirit like um, 
like a treasure, like a treasure map. Um, like you found a treasure map and X marks the spot and we're making our way to this uh, journey, right? Our journey, but our journey can sometimes um, be filled to get to this treasure map with booby traps and bad things that things have set up that maybe may not be our fault, but others fault, or maybe our own behaviors or things that we have to work out. But he is the one, the word is the one, the Holy Spirit that is leading, guiding and counsel us is the one that leads us out of these traps and avoids the traps a lot of times. And we just keep making our way all the way to treasure the one, the king, where our eyes can be upon, be upon the one with the fire, the one with fire in his eyes that says, I'm going to burn through you and I'm going to let you be the one that declares freedom because I'm in you. Declare freedom for me, he says. Declare it over people. Let break through. Be the lovers that we are called to be. The warriors, the combat booted bride that says, I'm going to partner with you. That you have called me the perfect partner. Then you are the prince of peace and I'm going to lean right in there with you. As you're praying, I'm going to pray for others. As you are breaking stuff, you're breaking it off of me, and I'm breaking it off of others. I will receive your love, and I will move forward. I will move forward. Yes, and amen. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. Okay, verse 17. And thanks be to God, for in the past you were servants of sin, but now your obedience is heart deep. Thank you, Lord, and life is being more by truth through the teaching you are devoted to and now you celebrate your freedom from your former master sin you've left its bondage and now god's perfect righteousness holds power over you as his loving servants his power holds it grace will bring us into this freedom we're free to do what we want we follow him he will lead us grace will lead us um, there's Song of Solomon too. I know I'm jumping back and forth, but Paul, remember that doc, um, Dr. Simmons says that Romans is like romance, uh, romance, a Song of Solomon. If you have done that study in the past with us, um, it, it is, oh, it is romance, the king to the Shulamite. And in chapter two, he says, the king says to us, hey, hey, Look at all these compromises in your life, lust, sin, greed, you know, the things, these foxes, these sly little foxes that jump in and they compromise our relationship of intimacy with you. He's like, will you catch the foxes? Will you catch these? And then he says, the very last chapter or two, he says, I will do it with you. I will not leave you alone. So if you are sitting right now and you are struggling with something that, that seems to constantly be something that you are turning around and you are and you keep going around the mountain, he says, I'm going to do it with you. You're not left alone. This isn't something you have to strive for. You get to embrace the Holy One. Embrace Him. Embrace His Word. Embrace this life-giving grace that will fall on you, that will be like the tea bag, right? You are co mingled with him. He can't leave you alone to catch these foxes. So be free right now. Be free to choose. I will follow the word. I will be free from the condemnation. I will be free from this issue that is bothering me. This word keeps coming. This doubt that keeps coming. And I will refuse it. I will turn from it. And I will say, I'm following you. You are the king. You are the one that infuses me with the power. Amen. Amen. Okay. Verse uh, let's see, 18, let's see, and now you celebrate your freedom from your former master sin, you've left its bondage, and now God's perfect righteousness holds power over you as loving servant, I think I read that one, so, amen, that is our verse 19, I've used the familiar terms of a servant and a master to compensate for your weakness to understand. Lord, we, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. For just as you surrendered your bodies and souls to impurity and lawlessness, which only brought more lawlessness into your life, so now surrender yourselves as servants of righteousness, with, with, which bring deeper into true holiness. I'm going to read verse 20. For when you were bound to servants to sin, you lived your lives free from any obligation to righteousness. For when you were bound as servants to your life free, 
you're not free if when when you are bound right and so if you're servants the lord if we are that servant like paul said i want to be Loss. And, and remember of old when Dr. Brian taught that um, in the Old Testament, when um, a, a servant was free to go from his master, but he wanted to stay because he had a loving master and he wanted to stay, they would pierce the ear. They would pierce the ear and that would mean, hey, he's free. The servant is free, but he has chosen to be a loving servant um, for the rest of his life. And they call they that would do loss, do loss, the, that servant. And uh, Dr. Bryan says, you know, John, he would lay his head up against his chest, up against Jesus. And he would lean in the one that, and he said, I'm the one he loves. You are the one that he loves. He, John wanted to be this loving servant, but Paul says the same thing. He says, will you not just be the loving servant because, and be that do loss because he will lead us. He will guide you. He will guide you away from this. He will remind you of the stake, the, the Holy Spirit that is bubbling up in you, that is so fresh, that is releasing fountains of all of the fruits of the Spirit in you. He will let He will let that rain through you. It will bubble up through your mouth, through your senses, that whatever your hands touch, you, you will be free and the bondage will be broken. Continue in the faith, friends. Continue when you feel worry, wor uh, weary. Continue fighting. Continue say, no, I will scream freedom because the King of Kings is inside of me. I know I keep saying this, but I want you to get that picture of the Lord like the hot tea bag infiltrating your body. When the longer that tea bag is in there, the stronger the tea. So we're going to leave the Holy Spirit in there. You are welcome, oh God, to stay and infiltrate every part of our spirit. I just declare breakthrough through those that are listening and listening later that the Holy Spirit will burn through us, that you will seep in every part of us and stay in us, and we will move, and that we will move to the glory because we will rise up with that strong tea. We will rise up with your fruits of the Spirit, and we will declare freedom, and we will call breakthrough because right here walking on this earth, we will bring heaven's kingdom. Heaven's kingdom here. This, this world needs it. It is time for us to declare it with the, the whole can. Bring the Hulk's power, right, down to this earth. Grab the kingdom. Get there in heaven. Get tucked up under the king, king and listen to his word and bring his word back to us. Open your mouth. Open your hand. It is time for us to get out and pray. If you can't talk to people right now, it is time to call people and pray through the airways because Holy Spirit moves everywhere. Amen. Okay, verse 21. What, what benefit is due from all the things that you're now ashamed of? Nothing. Nothing. It, it left you with nothing. There it is. It left you with nothing. A legacy of shame and death. We, we can talk to our blood in the face, our past, and the things that wish we hadn't done. But it doesn't leave us. It leaves us with nothing. That living in the world's way, deciding, oh, I want to play over here and I want to go over here, it left nothing but an empty hole. But now, as God's loving servants, you live in joyous freedom from the power of sin. So consider the benefits you now enjoy. I love freedom. Oh, I love the grace. I love the King of Kings. I love to move every time we say yes. You are brought deeper into the experience of true holiness that ends with eternal life. Glory to God. We live in a joyous freedom. The Holy Spirit gives us so much freedom. It's like a light. It's like we're high knee stepping everywhere. It's like Abby doesn't hold us down because the King has so taken our burdens. Even as a mom, I have to tell you, you know, as a mom or um, as a parent, you 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 take on the burdens and the worries like, oh gosh, I'm seeing the bad behavior of my children or oh gosh, I don't know what this or oh, the internet is so bad or oh, what are they getting into that I don't know? And you can get bogged down in this worry, but I can say, oh, Lord, they are yours. I can grab and I can say, you're from the I just grab it and hold on to it because it keeps me bogged down. I'll grab onto you said, it says, you are with us always. That you will, you will fall. As for me and my house, we will follow, Lord. 
prayer. And my, my listen, you hear my prayers and you love them more than I do. So I can take that worry and I can say, this is your worry. You see what they're doing? You can lead me and how to teach them. And then that their heart is yours. Their heart is yours to guide. And I trust him guiding our hearts more than I trust me guiding a heart. I'm telling you that. I trust him. So amen. This is These are practical ways that we can release a burden and say, I love to say, and I do this a lot to the Holy Spirit. I say, oh, oh, they're your problem. Or, oh, I'm your problem. Oh, Lord, I'm your problem. I'm giving me, I'm giving me to you. I'm your problem. You got to work it out. You got to work it out. And he does. He says, I will fully mature you. I will continue. Don't even worry. I will move through you. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that. Okay, so verse 23. Is I am? Yes. Okay, verse 23. For sin's meager wages is death, but God's lavish gift is eternal life, found in your union with the Lord Jesus, the anointed one. It's a lavish gift. Um, Dr. Simmons uses the meager wages of death. Death was like a, a dead fish. Dead fish, like a um, like a sardine, like ooh, you know something something. That's that's what it is. That's your that's your wages. You get death, but God's is gift. It is lavish. It is eternal life. It is union with Him. It is time for us to go. Sin is dethroned. Listen, Doctor Simmons uses this verse. I want to bring it back to your memory. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But the one who joins himself to the Lord is mingled into one spirit with him. Glory to God, you are mingled with him. He has put you inside. You are sitting right next to him on his throne. You are, we get to live his life again. We get to live his life again. He's giving you the baton. He's saying, go, go, declare freedom and break over people. I'm putting the paint on. It is time for us to feel freedom. You are not guilty. You are covered by his blood. The grace of God is on you. He looks at you and calls you lovely. He says, go, my dear one. Go and fight. Be equipped. I have given you righteousness as a weapon. Your grace, the grace, you are called to go and move and change the atmosphere. You are the one. This is the day you Let's go. Thank you, Lord, for that. So I, I declare a love, a mighty grace 
a mighty faith over you that you will go in a freedom. You are not guilty. You are the you are walking and sin is dethroned. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. Ah, amen, amen, amen. It is time to go, friends. I love you. I'm fired up. I'm probably going to have to go run a marathon right now. I, I'm so fired up. But listen, please leave your requests. I want to pray your prayer requests. I want to pray all over them. If you are feeling something, breakthrough. This is breakthrough time. Glory to God. He is the breakthrough king. It is all him. You are walking, coming with him. You have power, man. You better go. Do not waste. Okay. I love you. Praise God for you. Those that are watching later. Whoo! Don't watch it tonight. You won't be asleep. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, have a great week. He will be with you. You are never alone. Okay. Amen. 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 Our friends. Hey, Catherine. Oh, recognize yourself. Yes. Amen. I'm sorry. You know, I can look at I'm go back and Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Um, and I will see you soon. Thank you. And amen.